How you doing today, sir? Hey, good. Better haul off. We only got five minutes. Believe, believe me, it, it kills me. I, I could ask you more <laughs> right? questions. Um, so jumping right in, I just want to say congrats on this series. Uh, I'm so happy it was made. Do you think that at some point humans will be able to understand what whales are saying and what do we need to do to make this happen? I don't see why not. I think that if we used uh, AI deep learning and you give it a big enough data set of whale recordings that are closely linked with visual observations of what they're doing, what, what social behavior they're engaged in at the moment, I think that a deep learning algorithm could start to figure out ways to communicate with, uh, with whales. I don't know if anybody's working on this, but I can't imagine a reason why if you don't have enough data on the problem, but the trick is to observe them continuously and for long periods of time in a way that's not intrusive and doesn't change their behavior. Because otherwise you might find out that they're just talking about the, the skinny, weird, pink monkey people that are coming into the water with them. Completely. Um, what, there's a lot of content out there right now, a lot of choices. Why do you want people to tune into this series? Look, I think all these choices and all this, all this wonderful entertainment media that's coming out at us just helps build that Pink Floyd wall between us and nature, right? And a lot of people choose to pierce that wall by going on a journey into nature and some of the some of the high-end beautiful natural history photography series have done very well over the last few years because people feel that lack you know so our goal with with this uh, series of films was to remind people how fantastic whales are and teach them something new and to do that we had to find out something new right it was investigative and there were researchers involved, and we observed behavior that had never been seen before, and I think that's very exciting. And also to remind us what we love about these sentient, caring, emotional animals that share this planet with us, and whom we're sort of pushing to the edge of extinction. Yeah, it breaks my heart. Um, it, it, uh, what do you wish people knew about whales that maybe they don't know? I think I, I think the, the what I wish and what the goal of the series represents is to show people that whales are if we if we want to put it in like our egocentric terms or anthropocentric terms, they're very human, in the way that they use language, the way that they use music, the way that they interact socially, the way they have bonds of love, generational bonds, parents and children that they grieve, that they're much more like us than than just these sort of big, majestic, en enigmatic animals. And, and, that, and if that causes people to sort of fall even more in love with whales, then they'll, they'll have a greater tendency to make whatever choices need to be made with, for us as a civilization to keep them alive. Something that I admire about all of your work uh, is the way you use technology to further enhance your storytelling ability. Obviously, I'm hugely looking forward to the Avatar sequels, and I'm just wondering you. how you've been able to take new technology to help tell these stories. Well, the, the, the work that I've done in the ocean is, has been very tech forward, you know, obviously building submersible vehicles, robotics, advanced lighting, 3D cameras, and, and so on. This series was less that and used a lot of the conventional tools, but they pushed the tool set by creating remote cameras that could stick down from boats and, and do some elegant imaging of, of pods on the move, remote cameras that could be set in place so that they, had, they were not intrusive into the, to the, to the whale's psychology when the belugas were doing their various behaviors in shallow water in those shoaling grounds where they, they go for their, their big annual, you know, 2,000 strong meetups, you know, uh, remote cameras were placed there, drones were used and so on. So um, the natural history photographers on this show were definitely pushing the edge of the tech envelope to get some of these images. And it's tough because, you know, if you're shooting a polar bear on an ice floe, you can use an 800 millimeter lens and shoot them from a mile away. But with whales in the water medium, you, generally speaking, you've got to be in there with them. So there's a psychological component to it as well. You have to understand what they're thinking and not drive them away or be in some way intrusive so that you're observing behavior that's not abnormal for them. Com completely. I already have to go. I'm just going to say congrats on this. I know it's crazy. And um, have a fantastic day.
Thank you for okay, giving me next time, Next time we'll talk more. Hopefully. I'm going to hold uh, you to that. Okay, no problem.